Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Danielle and I'm the owner of Dan Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. If you guys are new to my channel, I do want to let you know that all of my groups and links are posted in the description below in case you guys want to check them out. Today's tutorial is day five of my 12 days of Christmas and I really, really like how this one turned out. This is kind of a take on my reverse pinstripe ombre that I did during fall time. But if you guys will recall in that video, I kind of messed up, um, ruined the spray paint and had to cover some parts with glitter. So this is kind of the style that I was going for originally. However, I did change the last step and instead of doing a double ombre, I only did one ombre for the pinstripes and then I did a solid white color for the rest of the tumbler, which I really like. I think it really brings out the pinstripe ombre a little bit more so you can see that detail. Everything you see listed here will be covered in today's tutorial, but as always, if you guys have questions about steps or materials that I covered, please just ask in the comments or one of my groups and I will come back and answer them for you. Also, don't forget that there is a giveaway associated with all of my 12 days of Christmas tutorials. You can find the giveaway question in my tutorial group. So if you are not part of that, go join it. It is linked in the description. But for now, we're going to go ahead and get started on this tutorial and I hope you guys enjoy. Also, if you didn't know, I am teaching a two-day class at next year's TumblrCon in Plano, Texas. If you guys are interested in going, I do have a link to tickets in the description as well as a discount code for our class. I cannot wait to meet you guys in person and I hope to see you there. Okay, y'all, first things first, we're going to remove the bottom of our tumblers. I just use my metal putty knife and a hammer. I just hammer the putty knife down in between the metal cap and the tumbler and it pops right off. These tumblers are from the Steel Magnolia. Almost all of the bottoms of our tumblers pop off. I believe the tapered skinnies and the curved mugs are the only ones that don't have a removable bottom. We do have a discount code linked below. So once we have our bottom popped off, I went ahead and just spray painted this tumbler white. And we are just adding a small amount of epoxy to our tumbler. I'm using Artistry's 1 to 1 ratio facet. I have tried several different epoxies and this is by far my favorite. There may be a little bit of a learning curve with new epoxies, but I get the best finish with this epoxy. Very minimal bubbles. I do keep a dehumidifier in my garage. This epoxy does like low humidity and I get a flawless finish every time. So I'm not worried about bubbles for this particular layer because this is the underneath layer. We're just sprinkling some glitter on top of it. This is a glitter color that has not been released yet. It will be released soon. It is a chunky mix of white, red, and green. And we're just sprinkling a little bit all over the cup. I am not getting any on the very bottom of the tumbler, just to make it easier to get smooth and spray paint. So we're just sprinkling it right up to that edge. And once this layer of epoxy had cured, I am going to apply two more layers of epoxy so everything is nice and smooth. So now that our tumbler has had a couple coats of epoxy and is nice and smooth, we're going to go ahead and apply our tape lines. So first I am just using painter's tape 
I am not measuring. If you guys have watched my videos, y'all know I really just eyeball stuff. I just <laughs> fold it over this piece of tape and if it looked like it was pretty even, then I am happy with that. If you guys want to measure, you can definitely do that. This is just my preference. I'm just measuring with my fingers, <laughs> trying to, you know, be professional. <laughs> So this looks pretty even to me. And now that I have my painter's tape on there, I'm just going in with some thinner pinstripes. This is just leftover vinyl from one of my pinstripe sheets. So it's not actually a size. It's probably about a quarter of an inch, maybe not quite that big. but this was just leftover vinyl. This is a perfect way to use leftover vinyl scraps that you save and hoard in your vinyl book. And once we get these pinstripes and tape lines on there, I'm going to take this outside and I spray painted it with a red and green paint and an ombre pattern. So I used hunter green and I used Majestic Red. These were gloss spray paints. I typically use flat spray paints because it does dry much quicker, but these were my only two options in the colors that I really wanted. I didn't want a bright green or a really bright red. I wanted a kind of vintagey color. So now what I'm going to do is take some skinny pinstripes. These I believe are 0 0.07. These were actual pinstripes that I cut out and these were the biggest size that I cut out. So I believe that they were the 0 0.07. And I'm just placing these vinyl strips in between the painter's tape and the vinyl lines that we laid previously. I know it is kind of hard to see because everything is spray painted red and green but you guys can kind of see the paint lines or the tape lines in the video and i'm just doing my best to place them right in the center again not really measuring we're just eyeballing it and i am just smoothing them down now when i put my vinyl lines on my spray painted cup i am not pressing them down as hard as I can. I really am just lightly smoothing them on the cup. That way it will be less likely that that vinyl is going to pull up your paint. So I am just carefully placing those vinyl lines and I'm just lightly smoothing them on. We don't need these to be permanently attached to the tumbler. They are going to be removed as soon as we spray paint over them. So as long as they're pressed down enough to where the paint is not going to bleed underneath the vinyl, you should be good. And for this gloss spray paint, I did let it sit for at least 24 hours. I'm always really careful when I'm working with gloss paint because it does have a tendency to get pulled up if you are laying tape or vinyl on top of it. So I do wanna make sure that it is 100% dry before we add the vinyl stripes. So I am just going to fold these pen stripes right over the bottom. That way we get a good crisp line. And then I'm going to take this tumbler outside and I'm going to spray paint it with a flat white. I am just using Color Shot. I also like Rust-Oleum Flat. So now that our tumbler is spray painted white, I let this dry again. And I'm just cutting the bottom tape lines 
so it makes it easier to remove. And I am removing the painter's tape and then the first vinyl lines that we laid down because I can just rip those off. I don't need to worry about them pulling up anything because they were laid on top of epoxy. And I really, really love the white spray paint against this glitter. I was really debating on doing another ombre with the red and green, but I thought that that would blend too much together. And I really wanted that glitter and those ombre lines to kind of pop. So now we're going to start peeling off the vinyl to reveal the ombre spray painted pinstripes. And I am loving how they were looking. It's such a subtle detail, but when you really look at it, it's like, oh, that looks really cool. So it's almost kind of like an unexpected surprise. So I am just carefully peeling this up because I don't want to peel off any of that spray paint. And here's how it looks so far. I really, really liked how it was turning out. So now I am taking these sparkly champagne pinstripes and we're going to apply them to every paint line that we see just to kind of outline the white outline the pinstripes and when i cut my pinstripes i always cut out a 12 by 12 sheet of vinyl full of pinstripes that way i have them on hand whenever i need them and i will cut out three sizes i will typically do 0 0.07 0 0.05 and 0 0.03 that way I will have multiple size options and I can layer them with other colors if I need to. Several people have asked if I have a template for my pinstripes and I think that I'm going to make one for you guys. It won't be up today, but look in the next couple of days, I think I'm going to put a template up on thedrunkflamingo.com so you guys can just purchase the template, load it into your cutting machine, and cut out a full sheet of pinstripes if you want to. And I always space my um, pinstripes so that you can use the blank space of the vinyl sheet so you're not wasting half of the sheet. You will be able to use the entire sheet of vinyl as pinstripes if you would like to. So I'm just going to speed this up a little bit because we are just applying pinstripes. I am using the 0 0.07, I believe, for the thicker lines. And then for the smaller pinstripes, I am going to be using the 0 0.05 size. And I am just cutting the end of the pinstripe off and I am just folding that down right under the curve of the tumbler.
So we are just outlining the ombre pinstripes right now. And I chose this champagne vinyl because I thought it went really well with kind of the vintagey green that we chose. I use a lot of the chrome vinyl that I have, but I decided to go with something different today. This champagne is one of my favorite colors that I get from my local vinyl supplier. If you guys are in Georgia, you should check out Perfect Press HTV, formerly known as JSI Signs. That is where I get all of my adhesive vinyl. They also have a lot of HTV, DTF prints, screen print transfers, all sorts of stuff. And they do ship also. Um, their in-house vinyl typically doesn't really have names on it. They are just randomly on a shelf because their inventory does change a lot. So it's kind of hard to know exactly what colors um, I'm using. I just call this a champagne glitter. I'm not even sure if that's an option on their website. And if y'all just heard a little rough, that was Birdie. We are outside and it's raining right now, but she wants to leave our screened porch to go play in the mud and I won't let her. So she's just staring at me. So once we get all of our pinstripes on, we are going to apply our decals. I was not really sure what I wanted to put on this tumbler. Um, so I let Adam decide what to put on here. So we, well, not we, he decided to go with ho, ho, ho. <laughs> How original, but I think it actually turned out good because it was the perfect size little phrase that I wanted. And I just took my ruler and measured to where I have the same length on each side. I think it was about three inches. I think this is a, the 30 ounce I believe is about nine and a half inches or so tall. So I just put my ruler up there and measured until I got my little phrase in the middle of the tumbler and stuck it on. And I just did this for all of the decals. And once I had one on there, it was a lot easier to kind of see where the middle was. I just kind of held it up, kind of matched up the decals. But again, this is just my way of doing it. If y'all would rather measure it out exactly and mark it with a marker or something, you can definitely do that. It's just something that I'm not really, really too concerned with. So I'm just kind of lining up the first H of the decal with the second decal that I'm applying. And once I get the final decal on, I will take it downstairs and epoxy two more times. I typically like to epoxy twice over decals. And once the final layer of epoxy has cured, we are going to do our glitter butt. So the glitter butt is the very last thing that I will do with my tumblers. I will make sure that everything is perfect on the tumbler and then I will fill the bottom cavities.
So I am just mixing up equal parts of Artistry's Facet. I will typically mix up about 15 mils total. I have found that the smaller exterior cavity usually holds about five mils and the center cavity usually about 10, depending on how thick your layers are. So I am just mixing this up really good. And I'm just going to separate. So I will have two different colors. These are also new colors. They are not on the site yet. If you guys purchased the Drunk Flamingo Advent Box, you do have both of these colors. We have not gotten that far in opening them quite yet. If you guys purchased the advent box, I hope you are loving the colors so far. So I will just fill the exterior cavity. I'm just carefully dropping in a small amount of epoxy at a time. And then we're going to mix up the second color and just pour it right in the bottom. I think these colors went really well with the colors that were already on the tumbler. Next, I will take my torch and pop the bubbles on this layer of epoxy. Then I will come back and add a thin layer of clear epoxy to the bottom only. That way the bottom of our tumbler has a slick, shiny, clear finish like the rest of our tumbler. And once that layer cures, your tumbler will be complete. And here are some finished pictures of this tumbler. I love how it turned out. It just screams Christmas. And I love the little peekaboo ombre pinstripes. And I hope you guys do too. If y'all enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to join my tutorial group or my damn fancy tribe. Both are linked in the description. Thanks for watching.